So Unlock is a project led by the Birkbeck College and the Institute of Education at University College London and it is funded by the Education Endowment Foundation and the Wellcome Trust. I am Dr. Eroise Dumontay from Birkbeck University and I'm one of the researchers on the Unlock project. The project was proposed by a research team part of the Centre for Educational Neuroscience in response to a call for the funding of neuroscience-derived school-based interventions. In both maths and science, children have to learn concepts that are counterintuitive. That is, they go against what they are perceiving with their senses, their intuitions, or what they have learned before. So, for example, in science, dolphins live in the water and swim, but like fish. But in fact, they are mammals. And as another example, it looks like the sun rotates around the earth and we say that the sun rises and sets and we do not feel that we are on a rotating object moving at great speed. But in fact, the earth rotates on itself in front of the sun. So that's another kind of counterintuitive concept. And as other examples in maths, children first learn integer numbers and that five is greater than two, but then with fractions, one over five is smaller than one over two and with negative numbers, minus 5 is smaller than minus 2. Here, in geometry, C is a smaller angle than the others, even though the arc is larger than the others, and that can be mislead um, children. So cognitive neuroscience research indicates that there are networks in our brain that allow very quick, automatic and intuitive responses, which are often correct, for example, when we're trying to catch a ball. But there are also networks that allow a more deliberate, logical, reasoned, although slower response. When trying to solve counterintuitive maths and science problems, cognitive neuroscience research shows that people, even experts, recruit the prefrontal cortex, a part just behind the forehead here, to inhibit the automatic, intuitive response and allow time for the correct, logical, more thought-through response. Here, in Unlock, we developed a computerized learning activity led by a teacher on an interactive whiteboard with a class of primary school children to encourage children to stop and think when they were solving maths and science problems to avoid them giving an intuitive but incorrect answer. Stop and Think was designed to be played three times a week over the course of 10 weeks at the start of a maths and science lesson for 12 minutes at a time. Stop and Think was set up as a game show where the other players demonstrate stopping and thinking behavior and share their reasoning with children. The class went through one counterintuitive problem in detail and then practiced answering more problems on a similar topic, once in maths and once in science for each session. A randomized control trial ran across England in more than 80 schools and with more than 6,000 children evaluated whether Stop and Think led to better math and science performance in standardized tests in children in year three, so age seven to eight years old, and year five, age nine to 10 years old. The comparison groups either did teaching as usual or took part in a social and emotional skills learning activity called C+, using a very similar computerized setup. This allowed us to test whether any effect observed were due to the content of Stop and Think or just the fact that children and teachers were taking part in a fun computerized intervention together. The trial took place across the Ottoman winter terms of 2018-19 and was independently evaluated by NFER, the National Foundation for Educational Research. The results were mixed. When looking at all children combined, the predictive positive results in both maths and science was not found to be statistically reliable. However, when considering maths and science separately, Stop and Think led to an equivalent of two additional months progress in science, which was statistically significant, and one additional months progress for maths, which was not statistically significant. The observed impact of Stop and Think was greater in year five than in year three in both maths and science. Finally, in addition, although the study was underpowered to test this statistically, year three children with free school meal status seemed to benefit more from Stop and Think in maths than the group of children as a whole. We find these results extremely promising, especially considering this was a relatively short intervention, just over a term, and the low cost of the intervention, which was calculated as around five pounds per pupil over three years. Teachers taking part in the intervention completed questionnaires and some were interviewed. The teachers did not support rolling out Stop and Think in its current version, because there were some difficulties with IT, the teachers would have liked a choice of what topic were covered in each session, 
and the difficulty of the problems could be better tailored to the year groups. We believe that these issues can be addressed in improvements to stop and think in the future and we will aim to research this more. Despite these limitations, a majority of teachers reported their thought stop and think had had positive impact on the maths and science ability of their pupils, but also on them as a teacher. For example, they said that stop and think help pupils to further develop social skills such as listening and considering other pupils' point of view. Some pupils took the stop and think idea into other lessons, that is to say, pupils were taking time to consider questions before answering. The stop and think game show contestants and animations in the program encourage pupils to reason more, which enhance their learning. And also about their own learning, the teachers said, it allowed me to develop my understanding of how the children in my class learn and how to analyze what they know, how clearly they understand concepts and to identify misconceptions that some, most of all children in my class have. It gave me an insight into how children's ideas can change when given thinking time and how they're able to reason as to why something is right or wrong. To read the full report of this project, please visit the Education Endowment Foundation website.